Did everybody bring a Bible? Bible to Bible study. Get a Bible out. Doesn't matter if I put it on the screen or not. Get it on the Bible. See, I, I like, I've, I've found that I really like putting my sermon notes on PowerPoint. I used to just put them in a Word document. And um, I've gotten to where I'd rather use PowerPoint. It helps me keep things in order. Helps me kind of keep, keep, on, keep on the focus. And every now and then I'll have a picture to show you like I've got up there. And uh, so that just kind of helps me. And, uh, but I want you here and I want you online to make sure that you have a Bible out. And um, I did, for those of you joining us online, I did a video, it's been probably two or three years now, called Home Church and Evangelism. And if you have not, if you watch us on a regular basis and you have not seen that video, I want you to go back and take a look at it because... Uh, In that, I lay out the fact that, yes, you can have church in your home. And if you look through the book of Acts, you will see that primarily most of the churches were in homes. And um, that surprised me. But anyway, there's ways to do it. Now, if if you uh, are laying in bed, if you're sick, that's one thing, laying in bed, watching. But if you're just not wanting to get out of bed, get out of bed, get dressed. There's there's some of you that will get dressed, suit tie dressed, okay, and sit in the home and have church. And I commend that. I'm not saying that everybody has to do that. But if you're going to act like your church is your home, then make your home your church. And as if you would come to the house of the Lord, that's how you're doing it. And the second thing is invite people over. Don't be the only one sitting in your living room. Invite people to come to church with you. And you may be surprised at the people that would come to your home that wouldn't necessarily go to a church anymore because a lot of people... They just don't trust churches anymore. Amen. Uh, 2 Corinthians 11, verse 13 is our key verse. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works. So what we're doing is that we're doing a study of, uh, we're doing a study of Satan, this is Satan 101, and we're studying his ways, his methods, how he likes to work, what he likes to do, and so on. So let's pick it up here, Genesis chapter 3. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 3, because Satan is... A deceiver. He is a liar and he is the father of all lies. If you, let me just, let me give you this as you turn to Genesis 3. Let's say that something at work, let's say that you're at work and you did something at work that you weren't supposed to do. Like, you clocked out early, and you, had, you gave somebody else your time card and said, clock me out at 4.30 like we always do, or whatever. Or let's say that you were supposed to come back from lunch at 1. You didn't come back from lunch at 1. You stayed out, did something or whatever. You showed up late, and now somebody is going to ask you the question, what did you do? You have something, you have things going on that you can't see. 
Because there is, it's not Satan himself, but it's one of his minions. And we're going to study his minions a little bit. He has helpers. And tonight, I'm going to start a series on devils and who they are. Where did they come from? Did you ever, who knows where devils, do you believe in devils? Where did they come from? Huh? You think? You think? Okay. Okay, you guys are all right. Because there's other, there's something I used to believe years ago that somebody, that somebody on the internet said, and I went, wow, that is like cool. And then I realized it was a bald-faced lie. So anyway, but we're going to study devils uh, on Sunday night for a while uh, and where they come from, what they do, who they are, so on and so on and so what some of their names are in the Bible. Uh, but anyway, the devil has helpers. And so you're at work and a, you did something and a question is going to be asked, did you, what did you do or did you do this? And in that moment, there's things going on in your brain. You have two choices. You're going to tell the truth and face the music. Or you're going to lie. Now, if you tell the truth and you are a born-again believer, then you're going to have help from heaven coming to your aid because you did what was right. Then you're willing to face the consequences. But you did what was right, even though you did wrong, you're willing to be a grown-up because little kids lie when they don't want to get in trouble, right? And it seems like some people never grow up. They continue to tell lies like little children in order to not face consequences. But see, they learn this from a child. They were good at, I have seen kids. I had a kid that he was, he became a grown-up, 18 years old, 19 years old, something like that. And I've known him for years. And he looked me in the eye and said, I can lie, and I'm pretty good at it. He learned, yeah, he learned that from a youth. He learned how to lie, and he never had to face the consequences of his lies. Okay? So anyway, you, when you are born again, you are willing to take the consequences, but you have help from heaven. Here's the adverse side of that. You're going to lie. And there is a devil telling you what to say, how to say it, because he wants to get you in a trap of your own lies. He doesn't care about you getting away with something at work. He, this devil does not care about that. This devil seeks to destroy your life. That's all he cares about. And so he's going to feed you what to say. And you may get by with it for 12, 15 times at work. But it's all a setup. Because this devil eventually is going to get you caught up and wrapped up in your own lies so bad that eventually it's going to catch up to you and it's going to destroy you. The devil always lays a trap, especially for saved people. He always lays a trap, when he, especially when he knows that you're born again. Okay, now, the devil may, or a devil, 
may help you with your lives just long enough for you to die so you'll go to hell. Because the one person you cannot lie to is God sitting on his throne. Because he actually has the record of everything that you did. And every lie you told and every lie that you got away with. There are some people, this man, this boy that I knew turned into a man. I know him and I hear things every now and then. And I'm telling you, he is still getting away with lies. And you want to know something? Cubby? He's a police officer. He's a cop. Okay? And he still gets away with his lies. Okay? So anyway, the devil is always the father of of lies he is a deceiver and he's got it's like the devil wrote a book and he's got every lie that is ever told in this book and he hands out copies to all of his devils and say here use this okay now where did I get that from well have you ever had Jehovah's Witness knock on your door you ever had that happen I did, and I noticed something. The two that were standing at my door, Brother Sterling. Sterling knows the story about me, okay? The two that were standing at my door, I noticed that one was talking to me and had eye contact with me. The other one had a book that was, part of it was the New World Translation, so that anything I come up with, if they happen to know Scripture or I use Scripture, they would open up the New World and say, but the Bible really says this. Okay? But then the other half of that book, and I got verification from this from Brady, the other half of that book was um, questions that people might ask, and here's the answer that we want you to give them. And I mean, it's that thick. It's like the Jehovah's Witness wrote down everything that they ever came up with, and they wrote out an answer for those people to give, a lie for them to tell you at your doorstep so you'll believe it. Okay? And I saw that because I saw the person looking in the back, thumbing through the back, and I knew they passed up Revelation. And I'm going, I bet they've got, because she went, and he's going, yeah, yeah, this is the real thing, right? And he didn't, he didn't reference that book. He just said, well, here's the answer to that, okay? And then I asked Brady, who used to be a Jehovah's Witness about it, and he said, yeah, how did you know that? I said, I saw it one, I picked up on it one time. I'm like the mentalist, okay? Or mental. Anyway, Genesis 3, 1, you're familiar with this? Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord had God had made, which means it's hard to catch him in his lies. The lies are so subtle, they may be one word out of a sentence, but that's a lie. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Notice that he did not specify which tree. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And what the devil did was hand Eve just enough rope for her to hang herself. That's what he did. And so the serpent said unto the woman, verse 4, Ye shall not surely die. One word in that sentence is wrong. If you take not out, then it matches what God said, ye shall surely die. But he said, ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. He told a lie. Told a lie. When Adam and Eve ate that fruit, yeah, their eyes were open. But they were open to the fact that they were now standing there with no clothes on. Now they were aware of something they were never aware of before. But they didn't become gods. Gods, and, this, and we're going to study this, gods with a little g are the, like the devils, the evil angels. And I have scripture to show you that. 
God's don't, the angels are immortal. God's don't die. And that's what he was saying. You shall be as God's, knowing good and evil. You're going to get this big illumination. Well, the only illumination they got was the fact that they were naked and they had just broken God's commandment. And they knew they needed to hide from God. The lies were subtle enough to get Eve to look at that fruit, to lust after it with her eyes, lust after it with her flesh, and in her mind say, that fruit will make me a god. So I'm going to eat it. So that's his subtleness. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Now the Spirit... You can turn there, flip, 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 flip. You turn there while I'm reading, then you'll catch up. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. Notice that the Holy Ghost is the one responsible for giving you the words that are in your Bible. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. That in the latter times, how is it that the Holy Spirit knew what was going to happen in the latter times? He saw it all. He already seen it. It's like somebody sitting down with you and saying, man, have you seen this movie that just came out? No, I haven't seen it. And they say, well, did you know that such and such is in it? No, I didn't. How how did you know? And they're like giving you the plot and ruining the movie. I already saw it. Well, that's how they knew. The Holy Ghost saw all of history. So, now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, the faith, the one faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Two things. Seducing spirits, doctrines of devils. So, the devil has helpers. There are spirits that go around seducing people. Just like the devil seduced Eve with his words. He talked her into it. Just like a guy would talk a woman into it. He seduced that woman. The devil seduced Eve gave her those words, and she went and ate that fruit. So there are spirits that are meant to seduce you, to draw you away from the faith. How many of you believe what God said in his word? Raise your hand. Every word, right? No, you, every word. The devil spirits are there to seduce you away from believing the words that are in the book. And how many churches has has he been successful at doing that? Todd said most of them. Anybody disagree with that? No, we all pretty much agree with that. Because a lot of the people that are on the other side of that camera have went to most of them in their area, and they can't find one. Yes? Okay. It says, the Spirit speak expressly that in the light of time some shall depart from the faith. So, they are giving heed. Who is giving heed? Those who depart from the faith. So the object here is, or the subject of all of these things is those who depart from the faith. Those who depart from the faith will be the ones speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. So devils don't have, need their conscience seared. They already, they're just made this way. They're made evil. God created evil angels. He made them that way. Okay? Have you ever seen an alligator or a crocodile? Have you ever seen their face? Does, their, does anything about their face say, I would really like to be your friend? 
Okay? They just look angry all the time. It's built into their face. They're very angry, aggressive, mean, and they don't want anybody to be their friend. They want everybody to be their meal, not their friend. So these devils don't, God made them evil with eyes that look like death. Okay? They're mean. So it's the people who have their conscience seared with a hot iron. It's a good question. I'm glad you brought that up. Some shall depart from the faith. The some that shall depart from the faith are the ones who gave heed to, sedu to the seducing spirits and the doctrines of devils. Name me some doctrines of devils that you've encountered. Yes. Huh? Catholic. Her mom is a Roman Catholic and despises her own daughter because she's not. Huh? The oneness people who, who do not believe in praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost like we believe. Okay? That's a doctrine of devils. That's a, that is a false doctrine. Bless his heart. I got a guy that he researches YouTube for me and he finds all these interesting videos. So the other yesterday he decided to go and find all of the people that hate me. And he sent me about 10 emails of people that hate me. And one guy hates me because we don't go to church on Saturday. Mike Hoggart is a heretic because, and, and here's what he said. Here's what was his big problem. He heard me say that Ellen White, the founder of the, uh, the Seventh-day Adventist, Ellen White claims that an angel transported her to heaven and she saw all the Ten Commandments blazing in glory written in heaven but the fourth commandment blazed brighter than the other nine. Fourth commandment is, thou shalt keep the Sabbath day. And she said that the angel told her that Christ died and nailed nine commandments to the cross. But the fourth commandment, we're still under and we have to obey it to be saved. He heard me say, that's a lie. And so he wrote this big blog article about how I'm a heretic. Listen, Christ nailed the condemnations that were against us, nailing them to his cross. There's not one verse in your Bible that says Christ left, number four, the angel that Ellen White, I almost said Ellen DeGeneres, that's a different angel. That's like a transgendered angel. The angel that Ellen White saw was not one of God's favored angels. She had a familiar, she had a seducing spirit teaching her doctrines of devils. That was a doctrine of a devil. If she heard that, what did Paul say in Galatians? Though we or an angel from heaven. He nailed it. Because I didn't know this. Ellen White got her doctrines from an angel from heaven. Joe Smith, where did he get his? The angel mor moron eye. Okay? That's where he got it from. He got it from an angel. Where does the Catholic Church get all of their apparitions from? Angels masquerading as Mary or any of the other saints. Those are, those are evil angels. Those are familiar spirits acting like they're Mary or acting like they're this. Just like the one acted like it was Samuel. Okay? And I'm just, that's how it works. Give me, somebody give me another one. This is good. You're on a roll. Yoga. Because the word yoga means yoke. Be not yoked together with unbelievers. Yoga means connection. And it's because that when you get in that trance, 
your hope is to connect with Shiva. A direct connection with a God. Okay? So when it's done in the church, when yoga's done in church, and they're saying, well, this is holy yoga. This is Jesus yoga. What they're saying is, you can have a direct connection to God by yoga. That is an affront to the office of mediator, who Christ is. You cannot stand and connect directly to God. It will kill you. You'll die. The Israelites, when God was speaking to them from Mount Sinai, they said, stop. Or that's going to kill us. The terror was on them so bad because God's voice was so glorious and so powerful. It's like looking at the face of God. We can't look at the face of God right now. So we have to see Jesus and accept that. We have to, anyway. You said, Melissa Kay? Witchcraft. Witchcraft. Wicca in the church. Anytime a ritual, a ritual, a rite, is performed whereby they say you have to say these words and you have to stand in this spot and you have to face like this that's witchcraft because where can you pray to God anywhere any where so anytime a ritual or a fire tunnel the, at the other Bethel Church out in Redding, California, where they've got fire tunnels for real life, they do fire tunnels, and they pass people through the fire, just like under Molech. Okay? I'm not kidding you. They do that. It's, it's freaky. Cubby, they send people out to graveyards because they say, oh, we've had, we've had people die that had anointing from God they died before their anointing was used up. They still got leftover anointing. So if you go out to their grave and pray, you'll get their leftover. That's necromancy. That's contact with dead so you can get something from them. And they, do, they call it grave sucking. They do this thing because their pastor told them, oh, God told me this. That's, listen, they, if, they, if those people would read their Bible, they would go, uh, isn't that necromancy? Uh, I'm, not, I'm sure that there's probably one person out of a thousand there that went, uh, guys, I'm not going. Well, why not? I don't know. I just don't feel right about this. I'm, I'm going to go home and read my Bible. Oh, you're not going to get anything out of that Bible. There's leftover anointing over here. You can get it from there. That's grave suck. That's necromancy. And they're doing it. Somebody give me a, This is good. Y'all are. Dispensationalism. Okay. Where did they get that from? Didn't get it from the Bible. Did not get it from the Bible. Okay. The idea that there is a truth that God gave to Israel in Deuteronomy, and it's not true now. This is what they say. And that's what dispensational truth is. It says that at different times, like to Noah, God had a truth to Noah that saved him, but that truth is not true now for us. It's a different truth. So, and therefore, it's not valid for us. Mike. Okay. There are two types of these. Naturopathy, there are those who don't like pharmaceuticals. So they seek out natural things to aid their physical bodies. I don't have a problem with that, okay? Because I've been to third world countries where they don't have the pharmacies that we have here 
and all they have is natural remedies. That's all they got, and I'm okay with that. The other version of naturopathy is that your body has all these cheese in, not cheese, like cottage cheese, chi. Your body has these energies that's bound up because you've been eating sucralose and it's bound up your chakras or your energies and you've got to do this and eat this so it'll re I had people come to me before I had shoulder surgery and I said pray for my shoulder I can't move my arm anymore and they said oh don't let those butchers butcher you up and I went what and they said if you'll we found this if you'll take this and take it three times a day and eat this, it releases the natural healing energies and your arm will be healed. And I went, thank you. No, I'll go see my, I trust my surgeon. He did a good job, by the way. Okay, yes, ma'am. Yep. Yep. Witchcraft. That's witchcraft. The Bible says, cast your cares upon the Lord, for he careth for you. The, you read through the Psalms. David said, I cried unto the Lord, and I gave him my complaint. He complained to God, and God had mercy on him, and God healed him. God heard him. When they tell you, don't talk to God about what's really going on, and, and especially don't tell anybody else what's really going on, that you have to tell them in faith what you want, and how, it, how, you, how you, you have to say the positive things like, I am healed. Well, that's a lie. My leg is not broken. That's a lie. They're telling you to say things that are not true in order to get God to release a blessing to you. You're not, don't you dare lie to God. And don't you dare bear false witness to your neighbor. If your leg is broken, it's okay to say, my leg is broken. What's that? Well, well, my leg is not broken in Jesus' name. Well, what's that cast on your leg? What are those crutches? I don't need those crutches in Jesus' name. Ow! They're telling you to lie when they say only make positive confessions. If you say, I think my leg is broken, they say you just broke your leg by saying it. No, I broke my leg when I fell down four flights of stairs. I'm just, I listen, I don't like, I'm mean about that stuff. Don't give me that, and that's that Joyce Myers crowd. Always make positive confessions about everything. I've known people that work for her that I heard one of them say, you know, boy, my life is not doing well. Oh, that's a negative confession. I shouldn't have said that. Well, if your life's not working out very well, it's okay for you to tell God, God, my life's not working out very well. Don't believe that witchcraft nonsense. That stuff, that, that's the kind of stuff that women put on Facebook that gets 4,000 likes, and everybody believes it, but it's in direct contrast to the Word of God. Read through the Psalms, you'll see that it's okay to tell God how bad you feel. It's so, hang on, turn to Psalm 32. I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you God's doctrine instead of that devil doctrine. Is that okay? Can I do that? Y'all don't mind? Post it. Psalm 32. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no what? Guile. Guile is deceit. Guile is saying, I have not sinned. See, I made a positive confession and that washed all my sins away. 
You're full of guile. Look at this. When I kept silence, my bones waxed old through my roaring all the day long. When you didn't confess your sins to God, God was laying down the... He was putting down the pressure on you. The Holy Ghost was beating you to death over your sins. For day and night thy hand was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned into the drought of summer. Selah means think about that. I acknowledge my, I acknowledge my sin unto thee. Verse 5. And mine iniquity have I not hid. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. There's four things in verses 1 and 2. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man in tune of the Lord, imputeth not iniquity, and whose spirit, there's no God. Four is always the spirit realm. And four, the fourth thing they mention is the spirit. Now look down in verse 5. I acknowledge my sin unto thee, my iniquity have I not hid. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And number four, thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. For thus, verse 6, for thus shall everyone that is godly pray unto thee. Godly people tell the truth. It's not a negative confession when you're telling the truth about yourself to God and to other people. You post that on there and you're gonna, they're going to hate you. They're going to despise you. They're going to call you out. You stand on the word of God, sis. Man. God's turning my sister into like me. We never saw that coming, did we? Amen. <laughs> you should have seen us growing up. <laughs> oh, the names that she called me in negative confessions. Here we go. Father in heaven, thank you for the truth. God, it took me years to confess the truth to you because I was scared to death that, God, you left me with no choice. And then I said, God, this is me. And, God, you've been good to me ever since. I don't regret it, not for a minute. Father, teach us to tell the truth and not bear false witness to you, not bear false witness to our neighbor. But tell them the truth. Be honest. Be godly. Because God helps those who tell the truth. God despises those who lie. And the devil is always the father of positive confessions. Because they're lies. And he's the father of them. He's a liar. He's got helpers everywhere. He's got seducing spirits. He's got those that teach doctrines of devils. And Father, help us to stand for the truth and we're going to be despised on Facebook for it. We're going to be despised by our own family. We're going to be despised by our friends. But to be despised by them and loved and accepted by you is worth it. Help us, dear God, to accept that. That it's okay as long as we're accepted by you. Bless this Sunday school time. Thank you for it, God. You've been good to us. You've taught us well today, and we thank you for it. I bless, these, bless these people, Lord, that helped us out today. And Father, teach us where all, the, where all the sin is, where all the witchcraft is, where all the seducing spirits are. Teach us, Lord, where they are so that we can convey that to others who are being caught up in this stuff. God, you're not done saving people. You're not done setting people free from this nonsense. Help us, dear God, to be bold because there's going to be somebody who's going to thank us for it in the end. Bless your word. We love you in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, amen. Aren't you glad you came to Sunday school?